happy people. What a blessing of a day it is. We are here in uh, late November. Got probably the best weather window I've seen in years and years and years. It's calling for less than five knots of wind. So we've got our hooker electrics, we've got tons of gear, tons of great friends, and we're heading out sword fishing today. We may try to catch a tile fish, we may try to catch swordfish, we may try to catch a mai mai, but more than anything, we are on an amazing boat right now. 44 foot contender with quad 425 Yamahas. It's gonna be an exciting day. It's gonna be an exciting day. I mean, what a beautiful day. So we just ran from Stewart down here to Jupiter, which is about a, I don't know, 12, 15 mile run. I'm gonna pull over here to my buddy Tommy, Tommy Armstrong, get some bait. I ordered some pilchards and some goggle eyes. I tell you what, this is my first time running this 44. It handles like amazingly well. And then Matt will give you the pilchards and I'll take care of him. Okay. I say it every single show as Tommy Armstrong. Tommy's live bait here in Jupiter, Florida. He's the most reliable, honest, hardworking young man I've ever met on the water. So, we just got goggle eyes and pilchards. Goggle eyes will be larger bait, pilchards are gonna be smaller bait. Anytime you run offshore, you wanna have live bait, so if you find a log or a weed line or, or anything, even while we've got our sword bait down, we can put the outriggers out and put four baits out there in case a school of mahi swim up or even a white marlin. You never know what you're gonna see. But now we have to come over here, throw the cast net and catch some silver mullet because that's what we're gonna send down for a broadbill swordfish. Perfect size baits right there, you guys. 25 mile run, we're fishing. Cutting what's called a split tail mullet here. Make sure that hook's super sharp. Then we want to measure it where we want it to sit. We want it hooked to sit right there. I just got done rigging my bait here. That's a silver mullet with a 10 aught mustad sharpened up. And then I really like this like bloody purple maroon dark indigo color. I think that's gonna look really nice down there. Put it in the water. Turn about as hard as you can. Now you're gonna slow down. Okay. Just go to one engine. Let it just keep doing its thing. Go on down. Most of you know, if you're like a longtime fan of the channel, you know, when we started, man, we didn't have enough money to pay for gas to go with my brother, Aubrey. And YouTube has created a career and opportunities for us that we could never imagine. And so right now we're in the market, we're looking for a big center console. Hey, this is Austin. He works for Sovereign Yacht Sales. He reached out to us and uh, said, let's go demo the 44 Contender. We have made four drops, all in different depths and different areas, had zero bites. So we're gonna wind it up, change gears. We're gonna go in and try to catch a golden tile fish. From there, who knows? We're just gonna keep making moves, trying to get a bite. That's what I'm talking about right there, y'all. So, made a quick move. We're in about 725 feet of water out off of Jupiter. We're gonna use some of these smaller squids and see if we can't catch a golden tile fish. Great thing about fishing out here, when you have a boat like this, you can hold enough gear and you can do enough things that no matter what, you can try it. If this doesn't work, move on and find something else. We've got a live bait well full of bait back there. He's got a bait out in case a Mai Mai swims up. It's, you're always 
always in the game for something. There's bottom. That's him there, huh? Got him on. That's a good one too, bro. This is what's awesome about this. We had this great idea of going out sword fishing. Oh, we're gonna go smash the swordfish. We, we, we didn't even have a bite. So instead of burning the whole day, I said, let's transition, let's run in here. I had a couple numbers I wanted to fish. Came in, made one drop, and we're tight. I got a hollow boot. One of my favorite fish to eat is a golden tile fish. And if this is a golden tile fish, tomorrow, while I'm watching football, I'm making something awful good. Nice fish. Come here, rascal. This is a whopper of a fish. That's a nice golden. Here we go. Right here. Nice fish. Now, take your lead. This is the way I use this rig. He's hooked right in the corner, right in the corner of the jaw. Be very, very careful. Hold your line, and let that fall out of the boat. There you go, got him. Come on up here, I wanna show you how awesome this fish is. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful fish. It's called a golden tile fish. They live down in these mud holes and they've got this little like flapper right there. I don't know what they do with it, but they come out and they ambush the fish, squid, any kind of little fish, they come up and grab it. Now the whole reason Jake paid out so much line, he wanted this bait to be all the way out there, just running along the bottom. And he did something that I've never seen. He held the rod. I fish it out of the rod holder. He held the rod. And one bite, one fish, beautiful, golden tile. Guaranteed, y'all, we're eating good in the neighborhood. The great thing about being in the ocean is that, man, the varieties and the opportunities are endless. Drake's trying to turn this into Jake meat for dinner here. Hmm? That's it. This is the great thing about being out here. Five minutes ago, he's fighting a tile fish. Old Captain Jake here, he's a captain in Virginia Beach, and he makes a living telling people, real, real, real. Watch him, it won't be long, he'll be swapping arms here. So everyone, real, real, real. Old Captain Jake up there, he's fighting one. We're dropping down. This is what it's all about. This boat is so big that you can do so much on it. It's Son, can you give me a little word? Jake meat for dinner. <laughs> you guys, I've been relegated to be cameraman, backup cameraman. <laughs> That's my job. Drive the boat, talk, and just watch Jake catch fish. Yeah! That's an Almaco. I'm a spectator, y'all. That's what I'm doing. That's a great eating fish. Yeah. All right, so this is not an amberjack. This is what is known as an Almaco jack. That's a red snapper. What do you think you got? No idea. 
I know, <laughs> but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, he's floating. I see, I got color right here. Looking gray, looking gray. Real. That's a huge snapper! Get the gal! Real missing! Don't let him! Dude, look at that mutton, bro! Yeah! Woo! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this slammer! Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Dude. It's my first Eight. one ever. That's your first mutton snapper? First mutton snapper. Dude. <laughs> what is Dude. up? You're trembling, bro. Let's go. That's what that's what fishing, that's what this life is all about. You should enjoy it and you should embrace it, man. Dude, I am so stoked for you. Well, while we have just a little break in the action, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for an amazing 2020. I know COVID has crushed so many people. It's killed the economy worldwide. It's locked people down. And I know it appears lots of times we're just everywhere doing everything. But in all honesty, we're, I try my best to stay either on the water or in the woods as much as possible. Um, it's been a really tricky year for us but we've got to do a lot of really cool things. And I wanna thank you all for the love, the support, the encouragement that's helped to make this possible. What a crazy day. We came out looking for swords, it didn't happen. One drop, we caught a golden tile. Next thing you know, we're dropping live baits, just getting smashed by Almaco Jacks, a gigantic mutton snapper. It's just been one after another. And you know what, that's how life is sometimes. You gotta dig through the mud to get to the other side. We ain't done yet, but I guarantee you, it's been a great day. And two seconds after I say that, we got him on. Hey, <laughs> whammy. Sorry about taking the gaff, I just... <laughs> It's too far. Dude, <laughs> keeper. That's my first Kobe too. Shut up. <laughs> hey, what a way. Hand me a bigger gaff. Hand me this, hand me this gaff over here. Watch that. There we go, son. You said you never caught a caught a cobia before, right? I have now. You have now. There we go. Right in the corner. Right in the corner. Beautiful. Perfect. Hey, we're catching lots of firsts today. So tell me about today. Have you had a good time? It's been amazing. There y'all have it. We went from nothing to having a box full real quick. Today has been one of those days we will never ever forget. It was an absolute dream come true just getting to come on this amazing boat. Thank you so much to Mr. Greg, everyone at Sovereign Yacht Sales. It's a dream come true. We're gonna head back now, clean some fish. Tomorrow, we're watching football, eating, eating fresh tile fish. Hey bro, where'd he go? There he is. Congrats on your first giant mutton and cobia. Congrats on finally catching a big cobia. Everyone, love you guys. Thanks for the support. See you at the dock. Happy people, time to cut some fish. Check this out. So, everyone's coming to my house right now. I was cleaning fish last night, but that's what we're about to whack up right now. Old golden tile fish. Now, look how, like, look at the colors on that fish. It's such a beautiful, beautiful creature. They do not have much of a of cheek muscle, but 
you may have wondered, why did you not fillet this fish last night? If you catch a golden tilefish and immediately fillet him, the meat can be a bit mushy and that's not what you're looking for. So if you leave it on ice overnight, some people say even two or three nights, it allows that, that flesh to, I think it, it causes the flesh to die and allows it just to relax. And tilefish have a little pin bone that goes right down the middle. You want your knife just to cut through it and then cut down the other side. Cut through those bones there. Right down. Now, once that happens, grab your meat and just let your knife cut right down the other side. And what you're left with is a beautiful, beautiful piece of fish. So this is what we're having, y'all. We've got some good old potato salad, coleslaw, macaroni salad, and that is a French brie with a sweet Thai chili sauce on it. Now, before we start cooking, I want to portion it. And instead of portioning it after I skin it, I will come like this. This will be a nice portion, about right there. And you just cut it right off the skin. Look at the color. That is just a fantastic fish. Now from about right there forward, you've got pin bones. You can take your knife, you can feel it with your fingers. Search right there and just gently, gently come down. And the, the pin bones sort of grow like that. So when you, when you skin it, you sort of like let your, your knife cut come down. Just like that. Then on this side, same thing. Question, how many of you have ever caught a golden tilefish? Better yet, how many of you have ever eaten golden tilefish? If you're ever in a restaurant and you see golden tilefish, make sure you try it because I, I consider it one of the all time best. What about you, Jake? There ain't anything better. That's a, a deep, cold water, slow growing fish. And they mostly eat crustaceans. They have a, a really good diet and it's just a really clean, nice, light, white, delicious meat. They call it poor man's lobster. See this just making nice, beautiful, pieces of fish. That's our portions. Now let's season it up. So I just set the oven for 300 degrees. Now I'm cracking some eggs, throwing them in here. Now see that? That's just a bunch of egg. Add some garlic into the egg. You might say, why do that? Because then you got lemongrass. Put some lemongrass in there. For many years, I never cooked with lemongrass. But once I started, I wondered, why was I not always cooking with lemongrass? It's such a wonderful herb. Boom. So now, we're gonna take our fish, and we're gonna put some garlic salt on it. Just like that. When we were in Mexico, golly, they were using a lot of garlic salt and garlic. It, it was so nice. Good, now take your fish. We're gonna throw it all in the egg, just like that. And let this just fall in love. Get nice and sticky. As promised, y'all, we got football, we got fish, and we got a little bit of vegetable oil right here. We're just gonna put some vegetable oil right down the center of our pan here. Looking a little hot. Oh yes. This is going to be good. Once I get it on here, I'm going to add a little bit more of this garlic. 
garlic salt. Not a lot, you know, just a little trickle, just a little pinch. You know, like, like when your husband or wife walks by and just gives you a hug for no reason. That's kind of what I did right there. There we go. Now, all we were trying to do is get this little outside crust, and then we're going to finish it in the oven. There we go. It's going to sit in there for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm making a sauce. Good deal. Now, we're going to do a little coconut rum sauce. Once your pan gets hot, come over here. Put a good amount in there like that. That's gonna be a lot. That's gonna make a pretty big fire. See that? Why'd you turn the thing off? As this gets hot, it's gonna evaporate out and you're gonna be left with the good stuff. Reduce it down. Then, kill your heat. Bring your heat down. We're gonna add butter. And just let this start coming together. A little bit of lemongrass. But you don't want it getting too hot. See how it's getting hot like that? You don't want it to get too hot. See how it's got that creamy look? That's what we're looking for for our sauce. It's gonna have lemongrass, coconut rum, sweet cream butter and lastly we're gonna go like this we're gonna add some capers to this we're gonna heat it up see that's what you're looking for if you if it has too much heat then it will break, but you want the, the butter to stay together. You don't want it to break. Before you ever serve a sauce, you always want to taste just a little bit of it. Winner, winner, we about to eat a tile fish for dinner. Look at this. Look at all the love just pouring out of there. Yes, sir. Take a piece of that fish. Just like, oh, look at it just come, oh my goodness. Lay it right on there. Grab some asparagus. That's your sauce. There you go. And let that just trickle down. All right, y'all. My man, thank you for making that all happen. This is Mr. Austin, his lovely wife, and uh, we're having fun. Let's make the rest of these plates. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh, goodness, you guys. How cool is this, man? I'm excited to taste this tile fish. It's been a long time since I had a fresh tile fish. I think we ever had. Mmm, not fresh. That's good. Very good. good that is amazing. Mm -hmm. That is really good. My car just got one more ice cream. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Jake, you call, you're like the master of disaster with tilefish. Tell me what you think. It's, it's real good. And the really important thing, something like tilefish, it's very good to eat. And a lot of people go crazy and, and just add too much stuff, and it really takes away from the flavor of the fish. It keeps it simple. Good. Nice little sauce. Very good. It's got such a good texture to it. It's moist yet firm. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be more dry, but it's not. Mm. Finish it. Really, really moist. When you finish it in the oven, it gives you t it gives it time to slowly cook. It allows you to make your sauce, get everything ready. Then, as all your plates are done, take it out, plate it, and you're able to serve your your plate nice with hot fish. No. 
Very nice. All I got to say is, this was awesome. It's the Christmas season. We're getting ready to go to Guatemala. We got wonderful friends and family down. I want to say thank you so much, Austin, for, for making this all happen. Uh, thank you so much, for Mr. Greg at Sovereign Yacht. Thank you, everyone at Contender, for allowing us to use that beautiful boat. It's uh, probably the most impressive center console I've ever driven. And I want to apologize to the guy who tried racing me on the way back to the dock. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you look bad in front of your wife, but I just couldn't let you do that. Um, <laughs> uh, that boat's really, really fast and super fun to drive. If you guys want to see me do a video on how to handle a 44 foot center console, drop it in, in the comments below because a lot of people are intimidated driving a boat with four engines and 44 feet long but it's actually easier than you would think. Hold on, and leave it in the comments below because I have yet to go on it. So if he gets a, a, a chance at redemption, that means I can go too. <laughs> we'll definitely give you a chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, you guys, I love you. I appreciate you. Take care. God bless. Lots of stuff coming, man. Lots and lots and lots of videos. But we are... Gone.